back in uh, November last year, we uh, sent out I sent out a request to all the validators to just uh, come back to me and inform me with what typical findings that they're generally experiencing uh, in the course of carrying out uh, validations on ventilation systems. And uh, at the time, we had 25 validators registered. And I, I personally would have done the registration audit of all 25 of those. And the they, they, they all passed that registration audit in our, on our register. But the shocking news was that out of the 20 houses we, we carried out those registration audits on, only four dwellings complied with Part F out of the 25. And if that isn't an astounding uh, demonstration of non-compliance, I don't know what it is. Of which, by the way, two of those compliant houses were the same house. So the two, two guys did their registration audits on the same compliant dwelling. So you can see, and even during the public consultation back in the day of part uh, L and part F in 2019, there were representatives from SIBSI and other uh, trade organizations in uh, Custom House in the, the department. And they themselves admitted that when they go out and check their own installers work, the level of non-compliance is, is, is pretty huge out there, you know? So, some of the issues that were typical recurring issues that are arising uh, during uh, inspections being carried out by uh, validators. Um, the minimum part F uh, ventilation rates are not being achieved. Uh, that's very commonplace. Um, systems aren't balanced correctly. You might have substandard flows in one room uh, excessive flows in another room. Uh, in one of the houses uh, we went in and there was supposed to be a background ventilator in the living room. Uh, we went outside of the house and sure enough, there's the vent on the wall, but it's completely plasterboarded over on the inside. Uh, insufficient undercuts and doors, uh, very common. And uh, just purely a uh, poor location of supply and extract grills. So I asked um, the register of uh, validators, some of them to submit some uh, um, photographs of defective work. Uh, this is a feedback from, from the register there that so some guys are busy, they're training up, they have a cohort of uh, builders that they do regular work for, they do airtight testing for, they might do the um, uh, part L compliance work uh, as well. And they're, they're quite busy, but, but on the main, there's, there is a cohort there of uh, validators who have had not one phone call uh, since been on the register two years ago. And the feedback from them is, is that there's a complete lack of awareness amongst architects, engineers, builders, and local authorities as to the requirement of a, a validation or an independent validation certificate. Uh, local building control authorities are not looking for the ventilation validation certificate in the BCAR submission. Uh, installations are normally carried out by the plumber and they have no comprehension of a good design of a ventilation system. Another similar type example that's come up is um, so a company like Lindab are engaged to provide and supply the ventilation system for a house and the builder will provide attendance in the form of two laborers to assist the installer. And the lads will look at the installation for the first three or four houses and then they'll dispense with the supplier installation guy and the two uh, operatives will carry on installing the systems for the rest of the 20 odd houses, but they have no comprehension of balancing a system, uh, all the other sort of good practice uh, that, that Emer uh, went through and uh, the systems are, aren't meeting compliance. Uh, the measured flow rates are not reflective of the commissioning sheet is another common finding. Systems have been cobbled together by a myriad of different 
parts and bits and bobs that's available down in the local DIY store. So that you've, uh, they're encountering uh, blocked grills, blocked vents, uh, unsleeved vents through walls, uh, systems being still set in the factory uh, setting, uh, transfer between, or in, inadequate undercuts again, we could probably cover that, uh, incorrect positioning of supply and extract grills, I think we've mentioned today already like about the handover pack, uh, like in a mechanical heat recovery ventilation system, people may be not aware that there's a setting, a summer bypass mode. Uh, obviously in the summertime, it's overheating is the concern. And another design issue that uh, the location as well of uh, intake uh, vent, if it's located on a black roof, which is orientated towards the sun, you're going to be sucking in hot air there. So these are two design considerations that need to be considered in the uh, overheating uh, assessment of a house. Uh, that, you know, good design will address, bad design doesn't address. So we're saying about inappropriate location of uh, supply ducts, it's very difficult to get in a, a handheld anometer to, to uh, measured the flow rate in this and that that's a natural supply grill they decided to put in a, 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 a wardrobe unit they carved a hole up to it uh, and hoped that that with all the the, the losses and flow would, would would suffice again another inaccessible uh, location for a supply grill emer course would probably better describe uh, you know good design bad design or, or well, good design, but you know you shouldn't locate a supply grill in a space where the flow of air is going to be passing over the the, the pillow in the bed, like and, and, and causing a perceptive draft to the occupant of a of a of a bedroom, say. Again, I think Emer showed plenty of examples of poor uh, flexi ducting, uninsulated. I mean, the losses, the heat, the the. The losses, the, the fan really has to work hard to push air through something as, as uh, kinked as this. Another common is uh, uh, vents that just disappear to, to no grill. Uh, this, this is, there is no hole in the roof here. This is the extract uh, or supply, I'm not sure which, but uh, it, it, it terminates just underneath the, the sarkin felt or terminates just up in the attic space. And um, this just discharges into the, in, into the attic space, or uh, we don't, I don't know, that's probably a supply. It's probably just drawing air in from there instead of taking fresh air in from the outside. We're all talking about indoor air quality. Again, we have an, an example of um, ducts up and outside of the uh, insulation or the envelope uh, insulation envelope of the building that are not uh, themselves insulated, which brings on uh, condensation issues within the ducts themselves. You've got examples of uh, natural ventilation, but no sleeving. And uh, yes, there was a vent grill cover over this one, which is quite incredible. Um, so one of uh, the validators, um, went out to a, a development of 20 units and uh, was checking through the first number of dwellings. And uh, there were a few minor issues. He was, got the foreman to call the, the, the installer of the ventilation systems to rebalance the first few. And then he went on and the next and the fourth or the fifth house, I think the fifth house. And from there on, he was at a loss. And uh, he, he was trying to measure, it was a centralized extract system, but it was providing air. In, into the wet rooms. And when they went up into the attic space, they found that the uh, installer of the systems had put them in upside down. We have a long way to go. Uh, there's just another example of condensation in ductwork. Uh, again, there's loads of examples of uh, unconnected uh, uh, condensation 
ducting as well that 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 are are going to give rise to huge problems. So I suppose just to finish up, what do we need to check and to reiterate the, the last slide of the last presentation? You look for your airtight test report. The value needs to be below the five, a probability of five. If we're below three, natural ventilation is not a viable option. Really, I think you'll all agree that the, the repeated message here today is for anyone to consider natural ventilation is probably not a very wise uh, strategy at all. And the final thing as part of the check, is there a current uh, uh, satisfactory uh, ventilation validation certificate available for the dwelling? If, the, if the, these things are not contained within the BCAR pack, well then they need to be sent back. Because uh, as you can see, and I think the overarching message here today is we have an industry that is by their own admission, um, not compliant or not compliant at all. And uh, that's the last uh, slide, I believe. Just the opinion on compliance as well as another important one to check. Uh, so uh, as part of the registration for uh, validators, we've developed an Excel sheet that allows one to quickly do a, a, a mechanical or a centralized mechanical extract design for uh, uh, any dwelling just by putting in the floor areas and uh, floor to ceiling heights. I make that available to any validator then after the registration order, but first they need to demonstrate that they know how to do a design from first principles. It's like any engineering practice or anything that you, you need to know the first principle things first so that when you're not putting rubbish in and getting rubbish out, you know? So uh, I also, in that Excel sheet, have a template search, which we showed earlier on. It's completely up to the validator if they wish to develop their own company branded search or otherwise. It would be nice, I think, if everybody used the same one, but we can't kind of put that uh, onto them. Um, again, you check that the registration number is somebody who is contained within our uh, NSEI register, no more than you would probably do the similar check for the airtight testing scheme or for the thermal modeling scheme or for any of the other uh, schemes that we operate. Thanks.